Hi, my name is Alan Wang. Uh, I'm a Chief Solution Architect for Huawei Technologies USA. Um, my area's responsibilities are broadband access. One of the key products I'm responsible for is distributed CCAP. Now, CCAP, as you know, has been deployed in, in the cable industry for the last three years. And DOSIS 3.1 has basically made CCAP a platform that's very competitive uh, uh, because the gigabit throughput capacity that you can offer to individual, individual subscribers. Therefore, it's a highly competitive solution, say, compared to a fiber to the home uh, uh, deployment. Uh, Huawei, Huawei's DCCAP platform, this means distributed, distributed CCAP platform, basically combines the both approaches, um, meaning putting an OLT in the head end, which as you know, uh, is the head end solution for fiber to the home, as we've shown here. But in addition to connect to the uh, fiber to the home ONTs, we also can connect to the DOSIS interface that they're implementing these uh, HFC node solutions. So here we see two form factors. The top one here is, is a design for HSC migration. That's the box you see here. Uh, that's designed to replace a existing fiber node. It can support from anywhere from 100 to 1,000 homes pass, depending on the size of the service group, meaning how many homes are actually connected to this particular device. As HSC uh, does further and further, uh, more and more node splits, the service group is going to reduce gradually toward less than 100 homes pass. Um, that's been talked about as a uh, cable industry solution to, uh, uh, to compete with fiber to home deployment. Um, the, the rationale is very simple. Uh, evolving an HSC plan with the existing DASA solution, and it's actually much more cost effective than replacing out this a wholesale swap out of the COAS plan with fiber connection to the individual subscriber homes. And so I want to talk about the second use cases for the MDUs, MDUs multi-tenant, multi uh, multi-dweller unit. Um, these are typically apartments or student housing or dormitory uh, stuff, um, use cases like that. Uh, for that, uh, this is showing a pizza box. We, we actually have another version. Um, that's the unit, the smaller unit there that you see over there, that's designed to support anywhere from 50 to 100 homes pass. Um, these, are, these are the number of living units typically you see in a lot of, lot of apartment buildings. Um, these are just basically two different form factor, different power and requirements. For the HSC nodes, uh, use, the, use the coax line power, which is 60 volt or 90 volts. Um, for the MDUs, uh, they're typically in store indoors uh, with 110 volt as the power source. So here I want to show uh, what the, what the uh, roadmap shows uh, in terms of performance in, uh, enhancement over time. With this same platform, where with DOSIS 3.1 nodes, we're essentially using 10 gig backhaul. So it, it can be either be a 10 gig, uh, symmetric 10 gig pawn solution or 10 gig point to point uh, fiber solution. All terminating the same OLT platform. Uh, starting with 3.0, so all these 3.1 solutions as, as ours are, are, ours is, uh, are backward compatible with 3.0. In 3.0, the maximum capacity you will see downstream is 1.2 gig, gigabits. Starting with 3.0, uh, going to 3.1 that's being rolled out today, uh, you can actually support up to 5, five gigabits per, uh, for the entire uh, um, uh, service group. So that's shared by uh, say 500 or so um, subscribers. And moving forward, when you, when you expand the spectrum range in the HSC COAS plan, you can actually hit 10, gig, 10 gigabits, uh, basically the DOS's pipe. That will be shared by say uh, same or less numbers uh, subscribers. And that give it, uh, makes it a very competitive uh, uh, broadband access solution um, in terms of competing with uh, fiber to the home. And that's what uh, cable, a lot of MSOs are looking at a fairly long runway for DOS's uh, 3.1 solution. And not only spend, spending spectrum to push it to 10 gigabits uh, per service group, also there's talk about a uh, uh, full duplex solution where it make the uh, upstream and downstream bandwidth much more symmetrical. 
So in that scenario, eventually um, MSOs can offer individual subscriber a full one gig symmetrical uh, services, uh, just like any fiber to home uh, platform will provide. Of course, that will be done without the cost of pulling additional fiber into individual subscriber homes. Um, that typically is costs anywhere from five to seven hundred dollar per additional cost. And uh, what the benefit of DOSIS 3.1 provides is that you can provide the same super performance, um, one gigabit symmetric, as I mentioned earlier, without that additional cost. So. Um, Although this solution has been deployed in the U.S., but um, and I would say somewhere in the few hundred, few hundred unit range, with several different operators in different parts of the country, worldwide has been a a, a, a fairly big success. Uh, here, here are the three prime examples. Uh, TDC in Denmark, especially our our lead uh, customer for three dot one deployment, with TDC. Um, they actually use the Huawei solution end-to-end -end, um, to upgrade the entire HFC network. Um, it's been, it has been used, uh, deployed successfully for the last two years and offer gigabit solutions for the TDC's customers. Um, that was the first DOSIS 3.1 project in, in the EU. Uh, the second case I want to mention is the Vodafone uh, Ono. Um, with Vodafone Ono, uh, that was the largest 3.1 project in the EU covering about 6.9 million homes. Uh, so that's a fairly significant project. And in the, in the case of Vodafone, this, this, this platform is actually being used to support quad plates, uh, meaning wireless is part of the triple play package. Um, Vodafone New Zealand is another early, pro early uh, project uh, deployment. Uh, in that case, uh, uh, Vodafone New Zealand actually deployed a combined fiber to the home with 3.1 solution in the same converged network. And, and the reason they can do that is because they, are, they have already started migration from a Palm, Quam video platform to IPTV. So video can, can actually deliver it via IP straight to the uh, over fiber to the, uh, to the fiber to the home subscriber. Uh, in that pl platform, because the converged, uh, converged platform um, creates a lot of synergy and cost savings, the total TCO savings about 30%. So in this slide, we're trying to put some numbers to, uh, to what I've been talking about. Uh, in terms of the DOSIS 3.1 channel delivery, in the first quarter of 2017, we actually delivered more than 262,000 channels worldwide and and that that compares to our some of our competitors we are we're lead, we're the leading um, um, vendor in that space by far uh, looking on the right right hand side the pie chart shows that we are actually taking up a significant market share from from you know from just a couple of years ago we increased from a very small percentage to to today uh, to the first quarter of 2017 a 24 percent market share and so far, we have uh, installed about 50,000 these uh, CMC nodes. CMCs are this, um, these node devices um, that's installing either the cable plant or the MDUs. We're the leading vendor with the uh, most uh, 3.1 deployment around the world. Um, we have many massive rollout projects in both in, in EU and Asia, Asia Pacific, as well as Latin America. All right, so here's the map that shows all the, all the major customers are. It's the uh, EU, of course, in this section, TDC, uh, Denmark. And in the U.S., we are leading customer is actually the Hargreens and South Carolina. And Latin America, we have a number of customers, in, including Telefonica. And, and of course, you, here you see both uh, from New Zealand. Uh, we have in our home market in China, Asia Pacific, uh, we have lots of customers as well. So DC cap in total has been deploying more than 40 MSOs or cable operators and serves over 15 million subscribers since 2013. Um, we see that ramping up in the next two years as um, uh, competition heats up in the broadband asset space 
with the Converge Network coming online. Um, so we think that DCCAP as a, as a pure uh, DOSIS distributed architecture, uh, distributed assets architecture solution, uh, it's going to gradually become more and more mainstream. And uh, always leading this, in this uh, particular uh, segment right now, and we expect to continue to lead the field in the next few years.